Hey everyone, my name is Travis. Usually I'm on the other side of YouTube making a mess over on my channel of dev tips, but every so often Alex invites me over here to tell you guys what I've been doing lately. So before we start, a big thank you to Alex. I have been geeking out over the new updates to the Chrome DevTools, specifically the device emulation capabilities. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, on my left of the screen, I have a website. And on the right here, I have the Chrome Developer Tools. Now, you've used this before, I'm certain of it, to open in, you know, the, the DOM and look at your elements, to change their attributes, their styles, and that is like a fantastic thing to do. But there is a recent addition, a recent face in this menu that I really want to talk to you about today. So that's going to be right here. You see this little phone icon? When I click that, I'm going to enter into a device mode. It emulates different devices that are available. So when I click on that and I see this layout readjust itself to a new device. So here we go. All right. Now we've got an iPhone 6 here. Now this is this is an important thing to notice. Um, Chrome is advising me to reload the browser. You notice that I didn't actually get a web view on it. It's just like a shrunk down view, kind of like like before media queries were really uh, popular in all of the iOS stuff. If you remember back then, it was just kind of, you know, all the touch uh, mobile sites were just kind of like you have to zoom into everything. So in order to get the page to look proper and to use the proper uh, user agent for the viewport rendering, Chrome is advising us to refresh the page and that's normal. So let's refresh the page. And now this rendering that we're gonna get is similar to, if not exactly like, what someone would see if they visited this website on, uh, we have a device picked Apple iPhone 6, okay? Now this is cool. Like there is a bunch of a bunch of devices that we can choose from. Uh, H, uh, HTC's, LG's, Samsung. Here, let's pick the Note 3. Um, let's pick the. Uh, you can even do tablets. Here's a Nexus 7, and I'll refresh the page to get the spoofing agent right. And we've got like this widescreen tablet. Now, now the device orientation right now is is a uh, landscape. But we can just click this button right here to get a portrait version. And it's just like you tilted or rotated your, your uh, device. So and that is pretty flippin' sweet, especially when you're making sure that your layout works for specific devices. Let's say somebody you know is saying like, oh, I need this to work on a Nexus. I need this to work on an iPhone. I'm gonna make sure that your layout is perfect for that device. It's a perfect tool for that. Even down to the pixel density, that's what this little thing is right here. This is pixel density. So notice I'm on an iPhone 5 and it has a retina display. I can choose an iPhone uh, 3GS, which that did not have a retina display. Now, now it's at, now it's at uh, one, one to one pixel uh, device. You remember when things were this small? <laughs> Everybody everybody now is walking around this office with these huge like billboard phones. Do you remember when this was the cool phone to have and it was just so tiny? And it was not a retina display. And uh, wow. Anyway, so uh, here's iPhone uh, 6 Plus, And you'll notice that its um, pixel ratio is 3, right? All right, after looking at all of that, we can open this other button right here. Oh, and this button right here, by the way, before I click this one, I'll show you what this one does. This one resets it to just an open screen, right? So this is just a web page that you're looking at. And then you ju jump in and, and choose a, you know, choose a device. So this, uh, this option right here will open a kind of a drawer here and give you these lines. Now what these things are, these are media queries. It's a, it's a, a graphical representation of the media queries that you've coded into the website. And if you click them, then your website will snap to the point of the, what the media query discusses. Isn't that awesome? So this one has a lot of media queries. Look at this, a lot of media queries. Now the orange ones represent the media queries, the min width media queries, right? Minimum width. So that means you think of it this way. Um, if the device is bigger than this breakpoint, see how that breakpoint kind of lights up when it gets that big? See how it's kind of tinted when it's not, like it's kind of darker here. Watch, see it's darker, and then it'll kind of light up a little bit when it gets to that point. So if the device is bigger than this point, 
then all of the styles that are under this media query will have an effect. They will become active. And um, you can see that in the way that it, when, I, when I hover over it, the, the kind of highlight kind of uh, highlights this one, but then it kind of goes this way too. Like see those lines that kind of just kind of stretch off that way forever? That indicates that we're talking about this breakpoint and above. Now the blue ones are um, max width, which means this point and below. So if this, let's take a look at what happens there. All right, you see this font size here? It's a specific size. And when I put my um, viewport smaller than 600, the font size actually reduces right there. That's one of, that's one of the styles, obviously, in that media query. And you can see that media query lighting up and in, in, uh, deactivating here in color as well. And it's 600. So you, there's also another type of media query, which is both min and max. Let me show you that. That's right here. This other website has one. Um, so this is min and max. And if you, if you uh, click it multiple times, it's just jumping to the min and the max, whereas this one will always stay at the, you know, the one point of the breakpoint. But this one jumps between the both. So you can see what's happening between them. It's fun. So the blue is um, max width. The green is a range of two widths and any of the styles that are in between there. And the orange is going to be min width, meaning any any styles that are bigger than this uh, point, right? They will take hold after after the uh, viewport gets bigger. See, there's one. This went from a three column uh, uh, grid right in the middle there to a four column grid right at that break point. Now you can do something really cool. Like remember how you know you do these every day, inspect element, and then you'll find that element in the DOM here, All right? Common, common stuff. If you right click on one of these um, media queries, you can you can inspect the point in the CSS where that media query comes into play. And we jump over to the sources panel and look, it just highlighted it. Bing right there. So now I know exactly what styles are happening between these two uh, dimensions. And you can find that easily. So this is super important and powerful if you've been given a document or if you're working collaboratively with another developer and you're like, wait, why is this happening when I, you know, on this size? Why is it, three, uh, why is it a three column grid? And you can uh, easily check that out. Oh, that's what he's doing right there. So cool, huh? Now, let's say you're working on a, uh, a project that has a specific need, like, and you want to like monitor a specific size. You can uh, come in here to, let's see, open this drawer here and go to device, select model, but you don't select anything, you just save. Like, so you find the spot right here, you know, get it right, and then save as. Uh, let's actually, let's go in here and I want to, oh yeah, you, <laughs> did I tell you that you can write a, a dimension in there? So let me chain this, this to, um, I don't know, 1280, 1280. And then, uh, I want the device, uh, the pixel, uh, density to be two. It was like, this, like if they're on like a, uh, retina iMac or something. Oh yeah. The iMacs. Wow. Or the, uh, retina MacBook pro, whatever. Um, uh, HD DPI display, and that's what we want. We can uh, save this. So I'm gonna save this as I'm gonna say iMac, and now that is a, a device in our device list, right? So you can jump to different devices, go back to the one that you know that you need, and it's always gonna be there for you. It's gonna make it's gonna make finding that sweet spot really easily easy when you're trying to you know do you know your different devices and stuff. Did I mention that you can do network throttling as well? Oh man, so sometimes you know depending on where you guys live, you might have better internet speed than your users. Uh, and it's sometimes helpful to get like more empathy for what they're going through to change your Wi-Fi speed to like maybe like mobile, you know, like or what is it on D3 or sorry, G3 or DSL, you know, so you can change your, your, um, you can throttle your network speed and, uh, and it's, it's really frustrating. <laughs> 
actually, I changed it to Edge, and then I started browsing just regular internet, and it's super frustrating. So I don't recommend it. <laughs> but but it but it's interesting because it gives you that kind of like um, empathy, you know, when you're uh, designing for for people who potentially have lower bandwidth speeds than you do. And it could help you to remind you to optimize your images or, you know, don't write extraneous code or, you know, keep it dry. Uh, just something like there. Now, in this drawer here, you have other uh, tabs as well. And uh, the sensors one is pretty cool. Like you can spoof accelerometer, um, like move it around and stuff. So like if you have, if you're building a web app that, you know, is, is for, for mobile devices and you know, you want to sense, you know, you can use their accelerometer. And, and, you know, what if you're doing geolocation? You can enter in uh, false coordinates, you know, and kind of like um, drop a pin somewhere or, or something like that. Another option is emulating a touch screen. So, like, right now I have a, um, I have a, you know, a regular pointer, right? So I can drag this image over here. Um, and if I hover over things, I'm highlighting them. Or if I'm dragging over things, I'm highlighting them. If I turn emulation, um, emulate touchscreen on, now I have this little circle, and I'm pulling the layout around like like you would on a on a touch device, right? And I can't select the text anymore, and I can't drag that image around anymore. And it's interesting to be able to look at what people are are able to do and how this will affect them on the phone with a with a dragging around kind of touch experience so you, you actually have to kind of like flick your mouse to scroll down you know or like kind of drag the page around and you know you can actually if you want to emulate pinching to zoom there's a way to do that you hold shift and you can't see my hand but i'm holding shift you see how my cursor turns to an iron cross there and i and i just kind of like flick i you know kind of pinch up and and now i'm zooming and now i can when I release shift, I have my finger back <laughs> and I'm just zoomed in so I can flick around this big screen now. <laughs> and I can zoom out too, pinch to zoom out by holding shift. Now one more thing I want to show you, I have a, a tab here open for scooch.js. This is a uh, this is a mobile first carousel. So you you know, you've seen carousels like or a uh, image slider on a website. Now if I click on this whole image and drag off, I'm dragging the image, but if I go down here and I emulate touch screen, I can now uh, slide this across like you would on a, you know, like a slider on a on an iPhone or a touch device. Now this is really cool. I used this recently on a project and it went over really well. I like scooch.js. Um, it's a lot lighter weight than uh, hammer time JS, I think, but maybe um, maybe not as specific because it's just for these carousels. It's not for like all touch events, so it's a little bit lighter. Anyway, this whole thing is pretty cool, huh? I love, I love dragging out to see people's media queries. Sometimes I just go to people's websites and I go into this mode and I'm just dragging around, checking out their media queries and be like, oh, why did they choose to do that? Like this, these people have a lot of media queries and I'm like, well, what's the difference on theirs? I can't really see because <laughs> they've minified their CSS like they should, but you know, you can still check it out. It's cool, huh? I hope you liked that overview of the device emulator in the Chrome DevTools. Be sure to leave a comment down below of your favorite features and point out anything I missed. Okay, that's it for me. Please check out my YouTube channel, DevTips. I'll recommend this series to you right here. We laid out an entire web page as quickly as we can using primarily the Bootstrap grid. So if you like Bootstrap, you might enjoy this one. Also, if you like podcasts, check out this one here below. We just launched it this weekend with two episodes. I'm really excited about it. We talk about the uh, 10 things that you can do to be a better self learner. So I really, really hope you enjoy that one. All of those links are in the description down below. Thank you so much for sitting still through the video. You are now excused. Go outside and have some fun.